This video abstract is on the cost-effectiveness analysis of orbital atherectomy and balloon angioplasty versus balloon angioplasty alone. In today's healthcare system environment, cost considerations are becoming more critical when choosing optimal endovascular therapy to treat peripheral artery disease. A cost-benefit analysis such as this can help answer the question, does using another device such as orbital atherectomy during balloon angioplasty provide long-term cost and outcomes benefits compared to angioplasty alone. In our analysis, we used the diamond back coronary orbital atherectomy system. The diamond back is unique in that it is a bladeless system, which consists of a crown used to sand away calcified lesions, while the more elastic tissue flexes away. Orbital atherectomy procedures remove calcified lesion material to increase vessel compliance, which may lead to reduced acute vascular injury. The diamond back system allows blood and micro debris to flow past the crown and continually dispersing particulate, cooling the crown, and reducing the risk of thermal injury to the target vessel. So in constructing our analysis, we used data from the Compliance 360 study of the diamond back system. Outcomes data and cost data through 12 months were used. Hospitals provided cost data in the form of uniform billing reports or UBO4s. Quality of quality adjusted life years or qualies for each state of the patient populations were gathered from previously published literature. It should be noted that procedure success for both OAS plus BA and BA was defined as no periprocedural stenting. So the results of our treatment outcomes demonstrate that o the majority of OAS plus BA population resulted in procedure success. Conversely, the majority of BA population resulted in procedure failure, meaning periprocedural stents were placed. All four arms of study were followed through 12 months, resulting in three primary outcomes, patency, restenosis, or claudication. The liter literature search resulted in health utility values as follows. Procedure success was given assigned the highest health utility value, followed by procedure failure, with restenosis resulting in the lowest health utility value. All of these inputs were constructed into an incremental cost effectiveness ratio analysis. The BA the average cost for the BA population was slightly lower than the average cost for the OAS plus BA population. However, the qualies for the OAS plus BA population were higher than the BA population. This resulted in a incremental cost effectiveness ratio of $3,441, which is well below the standard threshold of $50,000 that is used in determining whether to implement a new technology. So in conclusion, this study provides compelling cost effectiveness data to demonstrate comparable results for OAS plus BA versus BA alone. More importantly, the data demonstrates that the placement of fewer stents allows for more treatment options should reintervention occur. The increase in treatment options equals a reduced cost in the long term. This provides compelling data for interventionalists to treat calcified femoral popliteal lesions, which have long been a standing challenge.